there's always been an aspect of Halo 1 multiplayer that was really, really strong, which was Halo 1 had this incredibly diverse set of maps. It really was this incredibly focused experience. It had this beautiful simplicity. It's not often that a game just addicts me like that, where I just I have to keep playing it. It was amazing to me just to see how our entire art team would just go down for entire evenings at a time, right? Just from 4 o'clock till 10 o'clock to just play Halo multiplayer. It wasn't that easy to just go through and say, oh, well, these are the maps that shipped with the original ones and this is what we're going to do because we wanted to do something bigger around the 10th anniversary. We also had to think about the existing Reach player base and we didn't want to fragment it. We were looking at it from the player's perspective in the current day with the current abilities and saying, how would I play this level and what do I think is missing? So we looked at maps from the Halo series entire, including Halo CE for PC and even Halo 2. And we thought, which of the maps are people's favorites that work well with the Reach uh, engine and work well with modern kind of gameplay? One of the things we kind of came back to was that we wanted people to take a look at the map and immediately think like, oh yeah, I loved that map. Beaver Creek was actually the first map that started the whole conversation of, are we going to enhance the maps or are we going to just do pure remakes? So for each of the maps, we're doing two modes. We're doing a classic mode, which is staying as true to the classic map layout as possible. And we're doing a kind of a default tweaked and refined mode. Because you have things like Sprint and Jetpack, we took the opportunity to put in some new spaces and some new routes. There are tunnels and areas that you can keep the flow of the gameplay moving, so it's not so much of a dead end when you get to the end of the canyon. And it's a still a small map. It feels bigger than it is. They don't feel as isolated. You feel very much like you're in a world that's alive and in flux. We want you to feel that pang of nostalgia in your chest every time you look at the map. We chose Timberland because it was, uh, it was kind of an unsung classic. Probably one of the best vehicle maps. I spent a lot of time in custom servers on Halo PC just playing Team Slayer on it. The map itself is actually 20% smaller than what it used to be. On the art side, we've added a lot more tree cover. Um, there's a big canopy of trees which kind of envelop the play space more. I'd like to think of this as Central Park, New York City. Here's this beautiful landscape, but right on the edge of a city all around them. There's so many tight turns that there are lots of places for you you get hung up on and grenaded, just fun stuff happens. What other FPS do you get to put colorful flowers and green grass on your map? Another example of a map that was gray walls all the way through. I feel like you're just in a box with ramps. We decided to make it a prison by putting it in a place where it couldn't be accessed. We had to open up a lot of walls with windows. We even added glass to the floor. It's an interesting challenge to add navigation or even add new pathways that aren't dominated by jetpack in a purely vertical map. Added bridges and overhangs that changed the flow of the map. We don't want to overdo it because if there's too much noise in a confined space, then the map gets just frustrating to navigate. The gameplay is still the same, but it makes you feel like you're in a much more dynamic world. Damage is a good example of really pretty much purple walls, and that's what represented the Covenant theme. We kind of left it to certain affinity to think about, like, well, can they give this map a context? And I think they started by looking in the room with the waterfalls. We really wanted to give people a sense that they were in this water processing plant or this facility that had to deal with these natural elements. The bottom area at the base of the waterfall, there used to be spaces in between us, so you had to jump from the three spaces that sent it out. Now that's just a single walkway. You didn't realize the first time you played it in the original, but now there's all these ledges and different opportunities to get around your opponent and flank them that weren't there before. I think with our additions, so you don't accidentally fall to your death all the time, and also the jetpack, that map has really changed a lot, just the general flow, and it's a lot of fun to play. This location we chose is kind of where the genesis of Firefight began. It's a place where you stop and you defend. Traditionally, Firefight, you've never really had the Marines fighting with you, and that's something we were able to do, and we thought, well, if we can pull this off, this is going to be a nice new take on Firefight. Now it's you, your friends, and some buddies, or if you're playing by yourself, now you actually have some help. Honestly, there's just nothing better than hopping online with a buddy, getting in the Warthog, just killing some grunts. It's fun. Normally with a title update, what happens is you download the title update and your world has changed forever. So we couldn't really give them the existing Halo CE gameplay with an online component. This was the next best thing. A lot of the fun of Halo 1 is being able to use the Magnum again, and we wanted to allow you to use that in multiplayer. We were able to replicate the look and feel of the Halo 1 pistol with the standard pistol from Reach. Three headshots, any on the map you're going to take an enemy down. We've made sure that we can implement these changes on a game type level, which means we can have a version of Slayer that is exactly as it's always been, and a version of Slayer with our title update changes. We're going to be releasing beta hoppers before the launch of Halo Anniversary, and we're going to utilize all the feedback we get from the millions of players that participate to help ultimately shape this title update.
If people take away one thing from the Halo Anniversary DLC, it's the realization that those old classic maps still feel really modern. It's like a brand new map all over again once you get the armor abilities in there. The soul of all of these maps are still very present. And in fact, in many ways, they're enhanced now. Overall, the campaign and the multiplayer, it just hasn't aged in the way that we expected it to feel. And when I switch to classic mode and campaign, or when I play Beaver Creek and multiplayer, it feels new and it still feels nostalgic. And it's a strange mixture of feelings.